this is James with Law Hill. Today I'm going to go over our time drop time clock management software. I'm going to run through a quick installation and then go over the different features and areas of time drop. First, you can run through our demo by going to lawhill.com, click on downloads, scroll down through our products here, find the latest version, in this case it's 3200. Select the time drop setup. Save it to your computer. You can also run it if you have that option. Once the download is complete, click on the download and run it. This will bring up the installer. Click on setup. Then the installation wizard will appear. Click on next. Accept the agreement. Click next. There's two options here, store the data on this computer or the data is stored on another network computer or server. The difference between these two, if you have only a single computer that you're going to use for clock in, clock out, you're going to want to store the data on this computer and that's it. If you're going to have multiple instances of time drop running on other computers, all pointed back to a central file server or uh, another computer, then if this computer is connecting to one of those remote computers, you'll select this option and that will basically mean that this is a client only. It's not going to install the database on this computer and you can connect to the other database later after the installation is complete. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to store the data on this computer. That way it's its own standalone unit. Click next, 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 and close. That's it for installing time drop. Very simple, very straightforward. The only hiccup there is you need to know, or the only caveat rather, is you need to know if you want to have the database on this computer or not. So the default is to drop the database on this computer. And it's okay if you do that on all of your computers and then repoint them later. Um, just up to you how you want to do it. So after the installation, you're gonna have three icons. Time drop clock in out, time drop manager, and the user manual. The user manual will have the default username and password, which is manager, and the password is password. Uh, it'll also have a brief overview of all the different areas of time drop and how to use them. There is the time drop manager, which I'll go ahead and sign into. This is the administrator area, or administrator area, that will allow you to manage system options, uh, employee profiles, time entries, and run reports. I'm going to click on Start Evaluation. I'm going to sign in using the default credentials, Manager, and then Password is Password. First thing we'll do is kind of go over the Manage System Options. On the Business tab, this is going to affect all of the different terminals or, or stations connected to this computer. So if this is a standalone computer, this is going to affect only this computer. If you have other computers connected to this one, then um, this, these settings will affect everything that's connected to this system. On the terminal tab, these settings will only affect this particular computer. Data source, this is where you are connected to for your data. This is also the location of the database. So if you're moving or copying this out to a file server, this is the file you're going to want to copy out to the file server. You can make a backup, you can restore it, you can compact and repair it as well. Then we have the activation tab. This is where you can click to purchase the software if you want. And it will also show you your activation code if you need it for reference down the line. On the business tab, there's a few different features here that are rather important. Allow clock in, clock out with username only. That will allow your employees or students to clock in and record their time using only their username. They won't be required to do username and password. This is greatly going to increase the amount of buddy punching potential uh, because they don't need to share their username and password. They only need to share their username. So if you want to eliminate buddy punching, you can do it by uh, a little better by having a username and password. Require manager approval to close the clock in out screen. Some kids like to play tricks on others and close out the clock in out screen, which can create confusion among other users of the system. 
some people get confused when they go to the system and it's not what they expect. So they don't know what to do. They don't know where to launch the program. They don't know if they should launch the program or touch anything. So they may not just clock in or they may not just clock out. So by checking this option, that will require a manager to come over and actually approve by signing in and sign or by entering their credentials that the, the screen can be closed. Same with clocking in after a particular time. This option is off by default, but you can simply check the box to turn it on, and that would require any users to clock in before 8 o'clock. If they don't, then manager would have to come over, enter their credentials to approve them clocking in after the certain time, in this instance, 8 o'clock. Close clock in out confirmation message, close clock in out time assignment, and sign in form. These three settings determine how long the informational messages appear on the screen. When someone clocks in or clocks out, by default the system is set to four seconds. A message will pop up and say, you've now clocked in. That will go away after four seconds. You don't have to hit OK or anything like that. Same when they clock out. You have now clocked out. You were clocked in for X number of times and it will automatically close that screen after four seconds. There is a screen that will also appear for employees or students who are members of multiple departments. So if they're a member of sales and support and maybe a general um, that they're recording time for, or if you have projects created, you're using the departments for projects, then if they're assigned to multiple projects, they'll have the option to specify which project they're going to be working on when they clock in. Then when they clock out, it will automatically clock them out from that particular project um, or department. And that message will automatically, or that option will automatically go away after 10 seconds and it will assume the default. You can set a default in their employee profile um, so their time can be recorded. The sign in form, that's the red form I use to sign into this particular area. That'll close automatically after 30 seconds. Overtime occurs, you can set this to either a week or day, 40 hours, you can change it to eight hours per day. Um, pretty customizable there. Round clock in out time, you can do up or down, down, up specifically, uh, and then to the nearest you know, few minutes there, five, 10, 15, 30, whatever. Uh, that will you know, kind of clean up your hours. You know, instead of going to the second, maybe you just want to go to the minute. Um, Internet time server, you can set that so employees can't change the time on their local computer. If they do change the time on their local computer, it won't matter because the system will automatically go out to an internet server. There's a, a few of them listed here. It'll go out to an internet server and grab the time from that. So it's an accurate time. On the terminal tab, you can start the application when Windows loads. You can select a default report printer that way when you go to run reports, if you want to use something other than your Windows default, um, then this will override that. And when you go to hit print, this one will be selected by default. You can select a specific integrated scanner. If you're using our fingerprint scanner that we sell, the um, Digital Persona URU 4500, that particular scanner is integrated. So um, you can select it from the dropdown once you have the driver installed. You can require use of the scanner for clocking in and clocking out. What that means is they have to use the scanner. They can't use their username and password. So if you check that option, the only thing they're going to see is a green screen with a little fingerprint in the middle that says scanner ready. And that will allow them to basically place their finger on the scanner and it will clock them in and clock them out. That will pretty much eliminate your buddy punching. Um, since there's no username and password that can be shared, um, you can't basically hand over your finger and let them sign in for you that's going to require that they're there and on time in order to check out or um, clock in or clock out. This allows scanner to run the background option that allows time drop to lose focus. Basically, uh, if you have your web browser open or Excel, you're working on another project and you want to clock in or clock out, you can use the scanner, even though the application time drop is not in the, the foreground. It allows you to just clock in, clock out, no matter what you're doing, Time drop will take care of it. Let's move on to manage employees. Here's where you're going to add in all your different employee or user profiles. To change username and password, you can double click or highlight and click edit for the particular profile. 
go to the security tab and simply change the password by typing one in. This will always be blank uh, unless you change it by typing in something. There are a few different permissions. By default, when you add a new employee, you're going to see something like this. The only thing that they will be able to do is clock in and clock out. If you want them to be able to sign in to do reports, you would check those options. Then there's manage employee profiles, manage time entries, manage system options, and uh, pay rates. To enroll a particular employee in the fingerprint program, you'll click fingerprint enrollment, choose a finger that they want to use, scan their finger four times, and then click close. The notes tab, these are just free form notes. You can put anything in there you want. Personal tab, photo, address, these are all informational. Put a photo in here if you like, the address, uh, business tab. This is where you can do, uh, you can deactivate an employee. If they're not active, they can't do anything. They can't sign in, they can't um, clock in or clock out. The employee number, you can use that for uh, employees uh, and uh, for reporting. It will show up on the reports. You can assign a default department. This will allow your employees to basically, when they clock in, clock out, if they're part of more than one, or if they're members of more than one department, it will automatically assume a department if they don't choose one. Um, they can just hit their fingerprint and walk away, and after 10 seconds, it'll automatically choose the general um, if they don't specifically choose it, if they forget to choose it. Informational here, start date, end date, type of employee, um, the departments tab. This is where you will set up all your departments. You can click manage departments here, add in, rename, delete different departments. If you are a member of a given department, that means that you can choose the department when you clock in. If you're an owner, that means you can view reports uh, for that given department and you can see the clock in out times for employees or users within that particular department. So for an example, if you are a support person, if you're a support manager, you may not care to see the time entries for sales or general. You're only concerned about support. Same with sales. If you're a sales manager, then you really don't care about the others. You don't want to be the owner of those because you don't really want to see any numbers for those given departments. But if you're the overall uh, manager of a given team or bunch of teams, then you may be interested in seeing all of those, make sure all of your, your departments are checked. And these don't necessarily need to be departments. They can be projects, they can be classes, they can be events, they can be anything that you would attend. Um, so this is very flexible. It's labeled department, but you can use it for anything that you really need to. You can assign pay rates at the department level as well. So the manager employee has a pay rate of $20 an hour on the general. Um, he has a pay rate of 30 for overtime on the general. And if you need to assign to the others, you just simply double click and you can change those particular values. That's it for managing employees. Um, you can also change the um, clock in out permission globally. And that refers to this particular permission here. If you want to stop everybody from clocking in for maintenance or something like that, select this option. And then when maintenance is over, you can come back and allow everybody else to clock in. You can import or export employee profiles as well using Excel. Uh, let's see, that, that's it for employees. So let's close out of that screen. Then there is the manage time clock entries. I already have one in here from earlier today. I clocked in to the sales for, uh, for a little bit there for a test. If you need to edit a time, you can highlight, hit edit, or you can double click. It will allow you to change the department if you accidentally chose the incorrect department. You can change the times. You can clock back in by undoing your clock out. So if you uncheck that, hit OK. There it is, and clock back in at my original time because I had say I accidentally clocked out, something to that effect. Um, then what else? You can delete an entire time entry. 
you can select your employee profile and click add. Now let's just say I clocked in at eight o'clock today. And I clocked into the support department. And there we go, support, eight o'clock, there I am, I clocked in. If you need to clock out somebody, you can double click that, select clock out, hit okay, and they're now clocked out and they will show up on reports. The only people that show up on the timesheet reports are those that have fully completed a clock in and a clock out. And the tools, you can automatically check out all employees. So if this guy is checked in here, that, you can go to tools, check out all employees. It'll say you're about to clock out one employee. That looks about right. Click OK to continue. And you can select your clock out time. There you go, you're all clocked out. So you can use that at the end of the day. If you're the manager and you're one of the last ones out of the building, um, you can go ahead and run that to make sure that everybody has clocked out. Um, and you can set that time too. So you could set it at five o'clock because you know everybody left at five. Uh, that could be you know, a policy that, hey, all you gotta do is clock in. I don't wanna be a burden to you guys you know, tracking your time, but you gotta at least clock in when you get here. Uh, then I'll automatically clock you out. So you can do something to that effect. But that's managing the time entries. You can do searches and you know, filter by specific employees if need be. There is the clock in out screen. It's a green screen. This is the same screen you would get by running the time drop clock in out from the desktop. It would bring up this screen. And because I have require uh, use of fingerprint scanner when clocking in, clocking out, that's why you don't see the username and password. All you have to do is scan your finger and it'll clock you in or it'll clock you out. Manager sign in. I'm going to go back to the, the manager area. And I'm going to run through some examples here with clocking in and clocking out using a username and password. So I, what setting I changed here is I went to terminal and I undid the require use of scanner for clock in, clock out. Then now you'll see the username and password. And to show you just for completeness here, if you try and clock in or clock out with only a username, you would check this option, save, close, go back to clock in or out. Now we can clock in or out with only our username. Manager. I would choose a department. Let's do sales. There I am. That'll go away after a few seconds. Or you can click OK. And then manager again, clock back out. There I am, clocking out. Let's go ahead and sign back into the manager area. Manager. All right. And I am going to enable the password again just to have that there for my reference. When you go to time clock reports, you have a few different reports here. Uh, the who's here report, this is a report view of all the departments. If you select it, you can do specific departments. So it'll show you, say, hey, no one's here. That's fine because I clock in. And then I clocked out manager, password, let's go ahead and clock in to sales. I'm going to do support this time. Okay. And then we'll go back in and run that report. Who's here? I'm going to do all department support. Looks like the manager is clocked in. I've been in for 16 seconds. And there's also the who's here monitor. This will show you kind of a high level who's clocked in or who's clocked out. All departments, you could do support and you can see that I'm not clocked in to the general or sales area. I'm only clocked in to the support area. That will refresh every five minutes. You can change it to every minute or you can refresh manually. So if I were to go into manage time entries and you can leave that up too. It's the only screen in the, the application that's independent like that. Um, if I go in, I clock myself out, clock out, okay. This, if I refresh it, let's close that screen, refresh, now I'm clocked out. So if I were to clock back in by adding a new entry, add eight, we'll do general, yeah, that's cool. Then refresh that screen, and we're 
general. There I am clocked in. So you can leave all highlighted too, and it'll show you all the employees and what their statuses are. And because I'm a member of all these other departments, that's why I'm showing up in all of them. There are the, there's the employee list by name. This will show all the employees, break it down by department, you know, what employees are part of a given department. Um, and again, you'll only see the departments that you're owners of in this particular screen. So if the manager account was not an owner of support, it wouldn't appear in this list. Time clock reports, the my timesheet is the same as the general timesheet report, except that it disables these two screens. So only the logged in employee can view their own timesheet. So if I, as the manager clock in, or I as James clock in, then I would be selected and I can't change who's selected here. I only see my stuff. Click close, and if you go to manage timesheet report, or generate timesheet report, if you have access to this area, you can choose anybody. You can choose um, departments, employees within those departments, um, and you only see, again, the departments that you're owners of. You won't see all of them unless you're an owner of all of them. You can choose to show a summary only. Earnings, you can choose to show that. You can choose to have one employee per page if that's how your payroll likes to see it. Uh, and then you can do your date range for the given period that you're running your report for, your pay, um, your payroll for. Then you'll simply, I'll do month to date here. No, let's do today. I have a few on there for today. And the only values that will, the only entries that will show up on this report is if they have fully completed a um, time entry. So they need to clock in and clock out. That's the only time it will appear on the report. Click view report. And there you have it. I have everything on there. Um, if you want to see, so it's got duration, regular hours, overtime hours, and it breaks it down by day. So if you clock in, clock out twice a day before and after lunch, you'll see two entries per day. And then if you want to show, let's see, show earnings, show you what that looks like here. That's going to add in another row here for earnings. And then if you want to see summary only, there it is. Gets rid of the daily, you know, it just does a, a sum of everything for that particular person in that particular department. And then remove earnings. This would be the, the shortest report that you could possibly generate. It shows a one record per employee per department and then a grand total for each department. And if I did not clock into support, then I wouldn't be listed under support. I would only be listed under sales. So if, I only, if my only activity was under sales, then that's the only department I would appear under. So that's it for time drop. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to email us at product.support at lothill.com or give us a call at 855-LOTHILL. Thank you.